média. Le monde, c'est nous. As Kenyan airway pilot strike continues, the airline was forced to cancel 75% of its flight on Monday, leaving thousands of passengers stranded. Members of the Kenyan Pilot Association began their industrial action on Saturday, despite a court suspension of the order, after it failed to reach an agreement in talks with the management on better working conditions. Their demand includes the company lifting the suspension of payments to the staff providence and providing them with funds and salaries that owe them, particularly during the period of uh, COVID-19 and the period where about two years their money has not been paid. The cancellation of the flights by Africa's second largest airline is having a huge impact on travel across the continent, with some people having to manage an alternative flight, which is not to the best. The government of Kenya is doing nothing about it to make sure the people go back to their homes. There are people who have worked now and have stopped in Kenya and complained about how they can get back to their various destinations. We're also going to talk about the protests which is going on in uh, Ghana at this moment as people are calling on President Nana Akufo Addo to step down to the inflation and rising prices which is also taking place in Ghana. This is what we have for you today. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to Views on the Continent on our Pan African channel, Afric Media. We're sorry for the late start. So, today we're going to talk about two main things, but one is going to be a subtopic, and we're going to talk about what is making news in Kenya, which Kenya Airlines is one of the sec or the second largest when it comes to African airlines. And so far, since start today, the pilots have been protesting, calling on the government to pay their old salaries and allowances, which they were owed since uh, the outbreak of COVID-19. And they said this is more than two years, their money has not been paid, and so no flights in or out. So hundreds of people have been stalked, those who are working, those who are struggling to go meet their families, those who were on leisure trips, all of them are stalked in Kenya since Saturday. They have been calling the government for help and also other organizations to assist them. We should take note that this comes just a few days when, uh, or a few months, I beg your pardon, after the presidential elections of the country, William Ruto, who used to be the former vice president of Uhuru Kenyatta, took over the realm of the country. So he is the president of Kenya at this moment, and this is one of the major incidents in the country since he took over office. We should take note that he has not made up to 100 days, because they always look at the first 100 days of the president's office, and he has not made up to 100 days in office, and we have this. So people are complaining that so far it has been happening, people are striking, there are those who are stranded, and the government is making new news. We have other sources that are claiming that it should probably be something that is being foiled, because the president has not even had time to check other things, sitting down, and we have this, while other people are saying that that it was high time it's a problem that was inherited and so president william ruto should look into it so today we're going to talk about what to do and how they can go about it or how to treat these inherited problems from the past government. Secondly, we're going to look at what is happening in Ghana when President Nana Akufo Addo had to go out two days ago to talk to the population because people have been protesting for the past week in the country against inflation and high rising of prices on basic commodities and they are blaming the government of Nana Akufo Addo of not managing the situation well and that people are going hungry because prices have increased salaries have not increased and so they can barely live up to their daily activities or daily bread so they are calling on the government to step down particularly the president and give the country to some other president because he cannot handle the inflation situation in the country so the president called on the people to be calm and that his government is working on the situation and he understands their plight and they should give them some time to see what to do so we're also going to analyze that particular topic today I present to you my panelists so the person who is here in the studio to me with me to analyze this topic, we have Mr. Diwum Emmanuel. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Good afternoon to the many viewers of Afri Media, especially those who are lovers of the program, views on the continent. It's always a pleasure when we are here, even out of our tight schedule, 
we, 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 make, we struggle to make ourselves available, to make sure that we present ourselves to talk about what touches Africa and touches Africa most. Uh, like you said in your editorial, we are going to be talking about Ghana mm -hmm. uh, and Kenya. But I am tempted to ask a question before we really dive into the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if, if something is not wrong with the African population, then African population is wrong with something. <laughs> because even in the countries where we used to look up to them, that they have some relative calmness, the population seem to have taken that thing that they take from behind and they come in front to, I mean, carry out certain acts that are not very good because uh, as we'll be, we'll be running over the, 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 the case in Ghana, mm -hmm. it really touched my, it really beat my imagination because if you compare the situation of Ghana to that of other countries in Africa, mm -hmm. it means that Ghana is near heaven. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I want to use this platform to call on the Ghanaians to, to restrain and to maintain their maturity. We have known Ghana and Ghanaians yeah, as very mature people. people. I in speak, Africa. yes, the, uh, I am uh, the Secretary General of an association, New Era Youth for Africa. When I spoke with some Ghanaians, I, I mean, I, it was so impressive and it was like I, was, I, I, would, I could quicken the time that was to take Naya to Ghana. And when we start seeing such things, we start putting question marks. I think they should exercise some restraint, uh, maintain their maturity. They have always been mature, and I know they can come back to their maturity. Definitely. We wish them well as we get into the topic. They're also asking the government, because the government, due to the situation in the country, President Nana Akufo-Addo and his team decided to ask the International Monetary Fund for billions to support the economy in the country, to boost it, to go up. The people say no. They don't want the government taking debts because those debts they always pay them three times and the government is always indebted for reasons they cannot understand they had struggled and gotten out of those debts and so they don't want the government to take any money from the international monetary fund so that's another big problem in ghana hoping that <laughs> we're going to talk about that and we'll look for a lasting solution let's watch this report on what is happening in kenya and the pilots that are striking the hundreds of uh, passengers that are stalked at the different airports who will be right back after this report. This is the scene at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Thousands of passengers from different nationalities stranded after Kenya Airways pilots went on strike and grounded the planes literally. This comes after a five-hour meeting held on Friday between both the government and the Kenya Airline Pilots Association failed to yield a solution. Most of the passengers here were traveling for work, vacation, and even marriage association. But because of the situation, the travel plans have been frustrated. We've been here since 9 um, a.m. And imagine 9 a.m. to this time is more than five, six, seven hours waiting for a flight to go to, to go to Accra because I'm supposed to be in Accra to work Monday and then host an event on Tuesday. So now that you know Kenya Airways are on strike, nothing is happening. It's just crazy, really. It's, it, it, isn't, it isn't good. First of all, there was no email, no communication in advance. Normally, we are supposed to receive an email, but nothing. We got here and found out that there's no flight going. But after waiting hours, they ended up giving us like an alternative, which is Tuesday. For me, I mean, of course, they've given us alternative, but it's affecting a lot because I've paid money for hotels in Accra. I paid money for my events. How do I get the money back? In my marriage, I canceled twice. Uh, my marriage, my wedding, my court's wedding in Nigeria. And it has costed me a lot. And I also cancelled my schoolwork, which means if I lose a salary, I mean, if I don't work for a day, three days deduction. So it's a whole lot of hustle I'm going through here. And they are not thinking of compensating. The only thing they were saying was a voucher, food voucher. Am I suffering? We arrived to the sad news, that obviously, that it was on strike. We didn't receive an email or anything, so for, that was quite disappointing. Um, 
and it was our first time flying uh, with Kenya Airways. It was recommended by a friend. It was a great, smooth flight coming, so we are quite disappointed to actually um, have it today, you know, the way things have turned out. Um, and then we were told that we can't actually fly to Dubai until the 8th, so we were supposed to report to work on Monday. And now we've got, what, three, four days that, you know, we're losing money, uh, both of us, from not being able to work. And now we have to stay here. We're, it's a bit inconvenient, especially with uh, our son. The pilots, on the other hand, feel their grievances have never been heard by the management of Kenya Airways. Some of their grievances include Provident Fund, including employee contributions, they also demanded a stop to harassment and victimization of union officials and leadership and governance within Kenya Airways. Long before our members resorted to this industrial action, we have been seeking audience with the KQ management to ensure that we do not get here. However, our members' issues have never been addressed and we are left with no other option than to withdraw our labor to bring the management to the table for a sober discussion. According to the captains, the strike is not intended to test the government, but it is the right time for them to be heard by airline. The purpose of this industrial action is not to test the new government seeing that they have just taken office. There are painstaking issues that have been on the table far too long, and Kalpa family believes that the time is right to have them resolved once and for all. But Kenya Airways CEO Alan Kilavuka says the strike is and remains illegal. Transport Cabinet Secretary Kipchuma Murkomen also expressed his disappointment with the pilots terming the move an attempt to sabotage of an already ailing economy. So this morning, the Kenya Airlines Pilot Association's CALPA commenced an unlawful industrial action that has affected our operations. Despite our availability, to dialogue and to try and address the concerns that they had raised. I am very disappointed with our pilots and particularly the association itself because I spent a lot of hours yesterday pleading with them that this administration has, come, has just come to office and that those of us who are cabinet secretaries are barely a week in our offices and that the concerns they addressed, which concerns have been in existence for, an, for the last two and a half years, uh, since the advent of uh, COVID, and others go beyond the last three years, um, are issues that we could address given time. By Saturday evening, many passengers had been offered alternative ways of coping up with the crisis. They are offering alternative flight only by Kenya Airways. So by tomorrow, by day after tomorrow, we cannot depend on Kenya Airways anymore because there is a strike. It is not a mechanical problem that will resolve within a few hours. They are saying that they are going to rebook for us another flight. So we are going to get somewhere to say, like they are going to give us accommodation. You can imagine, and maybe you have a job to do tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much for that report. Um, Mr. Emmanuel, can you look at what's happening? And uh, they decided to start the strike on Saturday, and you saw the number of people that were stranded. Now, the CEO and his secretary spoke about the situation, and this is some of them took office, and they have not made even a week in their office, and the government just took over. So they definitely have books or files on their table 
that uh, uh, cases that have been on and they cannot treat every case like a day and so they were pleading for the pilots to give them time because it's the case that has been long going and they have not been able to handle the past government was unable to handle it and so now this is a new government they just took over they have not even been up to a week in their offices so they pleaded with the pilots to give them time but the pilots decided to still go on strike do you think the pilots should have given the pilots association should have given them uh, a little bit of time given that they are just coming in this is a new government and most of them were just handed over this new offices when you look at the members of the KALPA that is Kenyan Airline Pilots Association and you listen to them speak you will know that it came to a point where they could no longer bear it I think I'm very okay with them even though at times it is good to give uh, the benefit of doubt. Yeah, to another set of people yes, to try right. to solve to, the problem. To, to, to another set. Is their right, eh? Is their right? We should agree. Let's first okay. of all agree on that. Okay. Is their right? Uh, in many African labor courts, it's a right to go on strike. It could be sit down, it could be outdoor strike, depending on the intensity of what you are striking for. Mm -hmm. Anybody that leaves his or her house in the morning and goes out, goes out for a reward or for Definitely. a salary yeah. or for a remuneration. Now, it is, you are going to work that enables your family to bring. Let's not also forget that. Yeah. We have to first of all start by thanking them that for two years and a half, they were able to bear it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to think that to look at it from the human point of view, they were supposed to give a benefit of doubt, maybe for a month. If for two years they did it and they did not die, mm -hmm. I don't think for a month they would have died. Mm -hmm. Because it, it would have also given another added value to their services, mm -hmm. which they have been doing and they have not been paid or recognized for that. We have to condemn any Sioux from any part of Africa who takes people as employees and at the end of the day you don't pay them yeah. because you cannot employ somebody you eat well you change car every day we know some of them Open i mean down. change cars every day they build hotels they build houses put on, on rentages always on the flight they're in europe every day yet their workers are, i mean their, their, their workers are going through a lot of penury you see I also have another reading. You know, the taking over of Rutu was not salutary by every other party. Yeah, even his former president. Yes, I am coming. Uh, Uhuru mm -hmm. threw his alliance behind Ryland. the troublesome Ryan, uh, Raila Odinga. It could also be uh, the work of an invisible hand behind by these people to test the, inte the political intelligence of Rutu, which I salute it, and I encourage Rutu. If it is a litmus test to his first almost 100 days almost, in power, yeah. mm -hmm. then he should take it with two hands. And I want to tell the young man, the gentleman, that he should be calm. He should approach the people. He should struggle to solve it. When you are taking over a country, or you are taking over an association. You equally need to know and to be aware that you are you are going to inherit all oh, problems definitely. that were in that county definitely. or in that association. That's the big one. You inherit yeah. everything. You Who's inherit everything. Now, in his campaign, he had promised the Kenyan mm -hmm. that he was going to bring back the heydays of the Kenyan. Mm -hmm. I think it's a litmus test and he should not fail that test. Intelligent Kenyans as they are, they are watching. They are, their hands, their pens, and their papers are ready. That is the first test to start putting him down into the good books or the bad books of Kenya history. So I think he has to be very rapid. Now, it, it, it is good because uh, the, the association said it, the, the, the members said it themselves that it is not a way to destabilize the, the new, new government, government yeah. because 
the problem is as old as two years and a half gone. Mm -hmm. Yet in politics, when you want to take down your, uh, your adversary, you don't tell your adversary that mm -hmm. I want to take you down. Definitely. You Just come in point. another way. Yeah. Yes. So you see, um, it's tricky. It's very <laughs> tricky. It's very tricky and I yeah, think... because somebody will say, okay, yeah, it's true, you don't want to test the new government. They have just had that seat. Give them time. Give them... To, 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 exactly. To, because that's what I'm you saying. You know that what the CEO said? They had... It took a week long to yes. plead with them. Then Many hours. Then Yet, they should have just... They choose... To go on strike they now. They wait to strike. Now. So, Ruto, you have work. Mm -hmm. You need to start from the problems that you inherited. Yes before the problems that you actually meet now in your own government. Mm -hmm. So I am advising him. I know African politicians, especially those who claim to be opposition yesterday, mm -hmm. who finally got into alliance with those, I mean, who are in power, who have eaten fat. Ruto has to be very rapid. I think this is the time that his advisor needs to sit up and his communication and his intelligence services yeah. should not go to sleep even for a second you heard the people saying they receive no yes. email they receive yes. when they had pleaded with them and they discovered that they were not accepting yes. they should have put out a communique yes informing the people that right now we have a problem it, um, yes. give us it wasn't done yeah. it wasn't done mm -hmm. that said i want to think that the CEO himself need to sit up mm -hmm. to run uh, a transport Industry. One of the largest in Africa. One of the, the that's the second largest in Africa mm -hmm. should be specified. Yeah. It's not a child's play. Yeah. These people leave their families for a very long time, ferrying people from one continent to another. Yeah. These planes, they don't just they don't use water to fly. Okay. They have flight maintenance. They have everything. Those who have been transported. They are not transported for free. Mm -hmm. They pay their flight tickets. Huge sums of money. I mean, with all these colossal sums of money paid for all these flights, what could have happened that is unable to pay? The pilot. Yeah. What if the pilot would have chosen not to strike and have chosen to all resign on the same day? Mm. Ask yourself this question, Mr. Sio. Will you go and enter all the flights? And pilot them. No, but see, uh, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, the, the money is much. Two years and a half for pilots. Yes. You can imagine their salaries. That is so what I am. So this new government coming into place, they need time to calculate, and then you don't just do not just remove a chunk of money. We know that there's an economic crisis no, everywhere. That, everywhere, everywhere. So everywhere. like to remove two and a half years of this, you need to do calculations and see where you're removing that money if it's not going to hurt something no. else. Look, I am not saying that. That money can be paid at once. That would be a fat lie. Even if the president, even Ruto himself promises to pay it at a blow, I would say it's a lie. Mm -hmm. She will not be honest. Mm -hmm. If you are owing somebody two months and a half salary, there are always uh, these measures of appeasement mm -hmm. in every organization. When you see that the flames can go wide, yeah. you calm the flames, mm -hmm. you can say, hey, now out, Take of, this first. out of the two years five months salary mm -hmm. take seven months calm down give me just the benefit of doubt mm -hmm. maybe for a month or two mm -hmm. at that point if i fail to react please you are free to go mm -hmm. but it was not done so what what we what, what i see here as to have been the immediate cost even if there's a political uh, uh, hand behind is that the communication units were silent Maybe if communication was tactical and fast too, it would apprehend such an action. Because when some of them say the shows and the sections are claiming that they spoke with them mm -hmm. for almost a week, for almost a week, others claim that there was no means of communication and no mail mm -hmm. was sent to them. Mm -hmm. It was a time for them to broker a deal. Yeah. To broker a deal, even not because of their immediate benefit, mm -hmm. for the benefit of their, 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 their clients. clients yeah. Their clients are those who are using that uh, airline. Sure. And, and who, who gives them money? And who gives them money? Mm -hmm. Remember, a customer 
king. It's always a king. Yeah. In the Anglo-Saxon culture, mm -hmm. even though in the French culture is the is the reverse, you can have your money and a French man will tell you that I have the I have the, the industry. Mm -hmm. Go to hell. So in real terms, they were supposed to have taken urgent measures. Urgent issues demand mm -hmm. urgent measures. Mm -hmm. Especially in this situation where you are dealing with your customers, your clients, who are from different counties. Kenya Airways could have been very credible, but nothing gives them that guarantee that because they are credible, they can lose customers. Yeah. You see the people talking? Yes. Nothing gives them the, the, the guarantee that they cannot lose customers because they are very credible. They should be very careful. So I think it has come to light and the pilots even though I read somewhere today that they were going back to work by noon mm -hmm. or by afternoon, I don't know if they went back or not. No, hopefully, before yeah. evening news, we're going yes. to get the details. So I don't know if they went back or not, but they should think of their customers and do something about it. Okay. Um, we'll still come back to talk about, let's talk about what's happening in Ghana and the fact that uh, the capital, hundreds of people went down with red t-shirts to protest calling on their government particularly headed by President Nana Kufuado to resign because of inflation and rising prices in the country and say no to the fact that the government was trying to borrow money from the International Monetary Fund. What do you think about it? Well, uh, that, that, there I am. The point where the citizen says no to IMF, I'm very okay with it. Statistics have proven that uh, the, the heavily indebted poor countries in Africa are those countries that have always turned to IMF. Each time they have a problem. Yeah, the interest and what the yeah. take is like. Because the money is not just given like that. It gives, it is given with a, a heavy strings. E strings attached to heavy interest rate. And just imagine that the citizens are already aware. We should we should appreciate the citizens for being aware yeah, that's of thing. what can plunge their country into further difficulties. Yeah. That's part one. Mm -hmm. Part two. The Ghanaian citizens, like I said, when you introduce me into the studio, they have to maintain their maturity. Because their president, on the other hand, has maintained maturity. Uh, we did not see the president send out Operation Mame Wata. Police, Police, tear Shandam, tear, to tear gas the people. And even, I mean, in, in other countries in Africa, we would have been counting about 500 deaths by now. So we have to salute his courage. And his calmness, his attitude. He instead went out to give a speech. He went to out to, the to tell the two people that to reassure them mm -hmm. that I and the county's authority. He did not say I. Mm -hmm. He said I and the, the government authorities are leaving no stone on turn. Mm -hmm. And in the shortest time period, we will render you people a solution. It is at that point when he mentioned the IMF yeah. that the people say no, no. <laughs> resign. I don't know. It is true that we spend a lot of time criticizing African governments because they have attracted this criticism. They have not been doing the, 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 the right thing. But at one point we should also be reasonable, Emanuela. Yeah. Inflation is something that's taken the whole world, yeah. particularly at this point in time. Mm -hmm. When you look at the situation in Ghana, they say uh, the country's inflation, uh, cons uh, consumers' inflation toll uh, is at about 37%. Yet, we know that there are other countries in Africa that has an inflation uh, rate more than this one. Yeah. I don't know whether it is. At one point, you are tempted to believe that some dictators really enjoy power because when you want to share power with the population the population will do to you what they're doing to him in ghana because i don't think honestly speaking if it was in a country like cameroon nobody will cough eh? nobody will cough mm -hmm. the people will go about their activities we saw how uh mobile money tax came to cameroon the people told us who ha i put you in court that you go through and it went through we saw how the 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 people resisted the Afghan, the, the authorities told us the whole heart, it will go place. And it went through wholeheartedly. Yes. You discover that in dictatorial regimes, 
all their agendas go through, whether they are good or they are bad. In regimes that try to be milder, I say milder, with their population, it seems the population, population will often fail to understand them. Because at this point, let's also agree that there have been a series of strikes in Ghana mm -hmm. for some time now. Yeah. That one is a it's, fact. It's we, a we, fact. we should yeah. also agree Everybody on that. Everybody can go and check. Yes. This. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. But let's also look at how this man has, has been, been struggling, struggling to, to handle the handle situation. Them. We have not heard of any case where citizens have been butchered. We have not heard of any case where massive arrest has taken place and then people are sent into dungeons, prisons. I mean, let's understand with him. Uh, the, the city currency has also lost some value yeah. as of late. Just like the Naira. The, just like the Naira. Yeah. So we, all this, uh, I think the, it, 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 it also brings to my attention the role of the economist in that country. Mm -hmm. So Nana Akufo should be able to use the economist at this point in time. Yeah, definitely. He said he was working with them to... to no. Uh, we, look, one problem with African leaders is that they wait for a problem be before they start announcing the solution. That is one of the problems killing African leaders so much. When you are working on something, keep your people abreast, keep your people informed. When your people are aware that if you just surprise them one evening that my people look around the world, look at the toll of the, 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 that the inflation has taken. I think I'm working with the economists. And you give them a time, time frame. Yeah. I think just take them by surprise. They will not have anything to hang on mm -hmm. to start molesting you. Mm -hmm. When you just take them by surprise and working with the uh, country's eco finance economists to brief the nation and to give us the way forward, yeah. the people will rest assured mm -hmm. that something, is being, something done. is being done. When you are just quiet and you are working on the ground, till the day that, it's till the day that there's a problem before you announce measure, it's also a weakness. Eh? And I think they should be working on such weaknesses, weaknesses because it, some of them have ended up paying very, very dearly. Yeah. And if they are not very wise, they, they will continue to pay. We but that. we thank his maturity, I repeat. Because in other counties, as we are talking now, millions or thousands of people would have been missing, either sent to the missing portion of the county by the, bone, by the, by the bullets, mm -hmm. or sent by the gendarmes, sent to, to the prison. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that, uh, 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 we should give him applause. Uh, I think this was a similar situation in uh, Sudan where Omar El Bashir was ousted, you know, he started with bread and sugar <laughs> when the prices... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did not imagine, you know, it just started and like I, that. I'm not kidding you, Nyoki. And at one point, I think, in one of a sister station, I said, if El Bashir cannot fear what happened in 1879 in France because of the increment on the prices of bread, then he, is not, he cannot fear for his kids. And before I know it, boom, it came out. Sometimes we look at these things from a distance, we do our analysis. You no, know, you don't we imagine that. Yes, we try to just caution them, bring them to order for their own personal safety first, before that of the continent. But it's like when they follow us at times, they say, ah, what is that young man, what is that little man doing? I mean, I have my power, I have my military. There's always a turning point eh? when the people rise, yeah. even the highest military in the world cannot bring them down. Just look at the case of Cameroon, Southern Cameroon. When we started sending signals to Yaoundé that something very dangerous is going to develop. Mm -hmm. See where they are today. We can comfortably say and say it with all assurance that Yaoundé has no control over what is happening in North and South. Just like we're telling El Bashi, Omar El Bashi, he took it very lightly. Yeah, so today is the case of Nana Ado. Mm -hmm. Take it lightly at your own risk. And at the end of the day, you'll be asking yourself questions somewhere hiding. That why did I not listen to these people? Because the power of the people is more than the power of every gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in Sudan, when the things were, were bad, military had to join the population. Yes! They went and stood and called The them. military, first of all, before being a military man, you are a civilian. Yeah, you are brothers and sisters. You are brothers and sisters. Yeah. When, it, when the worst comes to the worst, the only they country... the president. 
the one of the only few counties where I've seen where the military is actually there to serve the president's Cameroon. But I think it will not be that forever. There are other there, times are changing. Mentalities are changing. And there always come a time for a turning point in the history of every nation. So, uh, President Nana, be very careful. We love Ghana. We don't want to see Ghana plunge into chaos. Mm -hmm. Because it starts gradually, gradually. Before you know it, it is out of hand. And when it is out of hand, you start calling for international community to come up. Yeah. Now is the time for you. Fix it when the sun is still shining. What do you think about the president? Because we also complain about some other African countries. When there's a problem, everybody's expecting to hear from the president. Nobody hears from mm -hmm. the president. And as you said, instead of tear gas and stuff, but since the people said protesting, particularly when he saw the number was increasing, the president made a speech and said, I'm working on this. Uh, my team, when they work on this, is going to be this. He gave them statistics and said they should give them time and that the people should be calm. What do you think about this move? This is probably something that other presidents should, should try to do. Like when your people are complaining, show them that you have listened to them. Come out and talk to them. Uh, <clears throat> one thing, like I said a while ago, there have been a series of unprecedented strikes in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But we should also be very honest enough to say that they can boast of having a president. I mean, they are different from those countries where they have photos as president. You see all the photos, you never see a president. Yet, they believe that such a country is having a president. He should be applauded for that. It means even he's failing in other domains, mm -hmm. the communication part of it, he's aware yeah. that I am here for my people. I need to talk to the people. Because actually the boss of every country is the people. It is not the president. It is sad. It is sad when you want to think of countries in Africa where you see their presidents once in a year. They barely walk. They are like ancestors. They are, I mean, they are hidden somewhere. You don't even know where they are found. When you look at such countries and you look at the moves made by Nana Adu, mm -hmm. you see that at least he has a plus. In the first, the first thing in administration, be it local or at any level, is communication. When there is free flow of communication, yeah. it 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 step it staples a lot of problems because the door is always let loose for angry population to pour out their anger mm -hmm. and to find in it an opportunity to bring on board every little dissatisfaction when they know that they are completely cut off from the leader the leader who speaks even if he's hardly on the field but I will not also be proud to claim here that Nana Ado is always on the field. No, mm -hmm. that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But at least he speaks. Yeah. When there's something. When there's something. Always does, uh, and that may explain why only 1,000. Ghana has millions and of millions of people. Yeah. And that may explain why only approximately a thousand people are angry. Mm -hmm. Who could uh, Protest possibly be manipu uh, manipulated from another angle? And the rights of the people to protest has fully been respected in this case. He's not only talking to the population. We have not heard that people have been tabassed or that people have been arrested and thrown into jail. That also shows a sign of democracy. Because in a country where the president is at the service of the population, not the population, being at the service of the president. Mm -hmm. You see what happens there. He is bound to communicate. But when it is the population that is at the service of the president, no, the president becomes a god. He is a king. He becomes a fellow. He is the almighty. Uh, if you rest a hit, the hammer falls on it. That is dictatorship. That has nothing to do with modernity. Because there are some presidents who do such things the modern way by providing the population with the basic needs that they, they want and mm -hmm. that's why you see that such countries that external population cries that they are dictators but the internal population they are there yeah you saw the example of Muammar Gaddafi yeah 
the population his death came from out of his county yeah. not from within the country mm. which means that he was a benevolent uh, a de de despot. despot he could be a dictator mm -hmm. but offering to his population what they wanted what they wanted so nobody so was complaining nobody was complaining so i think the case of nana akufo he needs to re-strategize and he needs to go above his world mm -hmm. because words also alone mm -hmm. does not suffice yeah. he needs to go above words and swing into action let him look into what has pushed the people. Look, I always like this. Uh, the, the, they say preaching in the Bible that I've always loved. Eh? When they say Jesus Christ was qualified as the best uh, uh, shepherd because out of his 99 sheep, he will abandon, uh, but out of his 100 sheep, he will abandon 99 to go after one sheep. It is true that the Ghanaian population is large, but only 1,000 population is on the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just means 1, that people. it means that they are discontented. Mm -hmm. Now, prove to them, Mr. President, that you are that good shepherd. Go after them. Even if, if they say a means, bring them on board. Talk with them. Mm -hmm. Sort things out. Because, as you, if you limit yourself to speeches, mm -hmm. as days are going, others will be gaining ground mm -hmm. huh? others will be attracted what do you want to say to those who are protesting because the president has spoken and called people to be no I, want, like, like I, I, I made myself clear when, when, when we started the program they have to restrain okay they have to restrain because the president has spoken it means that he has seen mm -hmm. and he has heard them he has heard them mm -hmm. uh, now my appeal to them is that they should restrain and be mature as the Ghanaian people who have always known yeah give the, the government time to work yes. Uh, to the president, I repeat, don't limit yourself at the level of speech making. Go into action, for action speaks louder than words. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We're almost at the end of the program. Last words on uh, Kenya and a word to the government. You know, they have just sat in place. They have a lot of things that, as you said, they have inherited. And this thing can cause some problems to the Kenya Airways, but... As, uh, as we read yesterday, they have had a meeting and they have promised that they are going to go back to work. So we hope that they go back to work because that's one of the best we have. We should protect our own companies in Africa. You for know, sure. they always say the nice for things sure. are outside, but it's time we, no, we praise you know. them for being the second largest thank and they should keep, keep that position but, and the government should try to look into their problems. Yeah, thank you very much for, for that insight. You know, we have always believed that our own is better than tier on. Uh, if the Kenyan authorities and the CEO of that industry are following this program, this is what I have to tell them. The first thing is to tender an apology to the pilots. Accept that for two years and a half you failed to satisfy them. But that is not the end of that company. Mm -hmm. The pilots on the other hand, should tamper justice with mercy. They are human beings. Yeah, this new government, they should give them yeah, a chance. Human, I'm coming. Humans are bound to make errors. The infallibility of man has met it in such a way that we should learn to listen to and forgive one another. Because we don't know mm -hmm. when our own turn to commit a grievous crime will come. Yeah. And they should give William Ruto the benefit of that. Give him time to sort out things and you enjoy the young man. If by virtue of any chance or manipulation somebody is behind, you people should not give the person any reason to destabilize the aviation industry in your country. Mm -hmm. Give your country the best name that it used to have. Not only their country, all of Africa, Africa look, looks yes. up to them. Africa. Yeah, when we it are comes proud. to their transport. Area. Each time we hear of Kenya air, air, uh, Airlines, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, all Ethiopia those, those are the Airlines. big names in Africa. We are proud. Yeah. That even if in our respective countries we are having terrestrial flights, you people are making us proud. Keep making us proud. Give them to the benefit of that. Definitely. Give. And I'm, I am very sure he will do things big. He's a big man. He has been in the government. He knows he how things work. 
he wouldn't fail. And he knows very well if he fails in what? his first litmus yeah. test, yeah. he would have failed throughout his mandate. Yeah, nobody will have confidence in him. Nobody. That means that what he promised, he will yeah, not yeah, be yeah, able to, to deliver he, half. Yeah, total failure. So the, the, you people, you have to to give into concession. Think about the image of Africa first. Mm -hmm. Do it for Africa, not just for Kenya, mm -hmm. not just for your families. Do it for the for the whole of Africa. I think that would be a plus. Yeah. And that will stop the white boys from thinking because where they are now, they are already having a plan B mm. in their agenda to run in that in the name of help. Mm -hmm. And from that help, they will lead us to where they've always led us to. Mm -hmm. So, dear pilots, the work you do, nobody can pay you. The risks you take, nobody can. I mean, only God can pay you. So, listen to the voice of reason and give reason a chance. Yeah, hopefully uh, the CEO and the government, William Rutu, they, they try to solve the situation and work gets over. As we said, it's one of the, the second largest and most African countries look up to those who are trying to do well to copy from them. And so if things are handled well, it is a good plus for them. So at, it's, it's at this note that we end this program for today. Thank you very much, Mr. Dimo Emmanuel. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thank you and, for your uh, time. we greet all our Kenyans and our Ghanaian friends. Mm -hmm that we, we, we believe in them. We believe that with their maturity, they can handle things the right way. So this is the time for you guys to make things easy for your government. Thank you very much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the program. Thank you very much for watching. Tomorrow is another day. You're going to be with another journalist. Then I will be with you again on Friday, same time for another topic on the program Views on the Continent. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.